Hey, Skills Champions, it's Rachel Unruh here with my colleague, Katie Spiker, for the latest episode of Skills on the Hill. Uh, it's been a minute since we've talked to you, and of course, there was some big news uh, yesterday that we're here to talk about when the president announced that he is conceding that he can't get his sig signature Build Back Better package passed as a whole and that it's going to have to be broken up into smaller bills. Um, so obviously Build Back Better is something we've been talking to our network about for quite a while now. Um, Katie, I'm wondering if you can remind folks just sort of where we've been and how we got to this announcement. Absolutely. Uh, we'll go all the way back, I guess, to last year, but really we could start this conversation even almost two years ago, thinking about the advocacy that the network has done around trying to ensure that there are investments in, in workforce and community and technical colleges and support services and workers and businesses as part of the, the recovery package. And I think the, the first place to start is that throughout the, the bills, the reconciliation, the economic recovery bills that we've seen Congress pass, just to remind folks, we've not seen meaningful investments in skills yet, but we have seen some, some progress because of the advocacy that our network has done over the past um, couple of years. So, so the first place that we'll start last fall is the passage of the infrastructure bill. The bipartisan infrastructure package included investments in digital equity for workers. It included investments in some occupational specific packages. The House passed their Builds Back Better package that include, included $40 billion in workforce funding and funding for sector-based training, um, for uh, retention for community college students. That package excluded the pieces around community college tuition assistance and free community college for students that were a mainstay for the, the Biden administration in some of their campaigns and their negotiations. Um, but it did include that, that $40 billion investment in workforce. Since then, the action turned to the Senate, and we've seen some of the more moderate senators, including Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema, really be some of the holdouts to actually uh, moving through and coming to a cohesive agreement among Senate Democrats about what could be part of a package um, that, that the Dems could pass through the process called reconciliation. Um, now, as you mentioned, there was a... Um, an announcement from the White House and, and really a recognition of where the uh, administration and Democrats in Congress are in trying to pass this next stimulus package, um, recognizing, again, in some ways this is new because of the recogni this recognition or uh, um, proposal or claim that they're going to divide up the pieces of Build Back Better. Um, in other ways, it's a recognition of the same conversation that we've been having for at least a month now about the fact that there is not support among all of the, the Dems that would need to vote for this package, that the bill passed by the House um, is, is the right way to move forward. So, um, you know, I think that we're now in for a new round of uh, negotiation, some of which is going to build on what we've uh, and what Congress worked on over the past couple of months, and some of which is going to stir up new conversations. Great. So, that's how we got here and we are where we are. So uh, what does this mean in terms of the prospect for additional investments uh, in people that we know were so important to that comprehensive Build Back Better package and that you know are really essential uh, companions to that infrastructure bill that was passed last year? The, so the infrastructure bill is really one of the key points here. That, and that's really one of the pieces that I think has changed um, from the last time that our network did a big push on some of the advocacy last fall. Last fall. So now there are resources, um, both that some of the um, Department of Transportation, Department of Energy will be releasing around support for workers for uh, training in those industries, as well as a focus on these digital skills that the Department of Commerce will be releasing. And at the same time, states are struggling to make sure that they're aligning the expenditure of some of the funds that they've got to align with the projects that will be funded under the infrastructure bill that does not have investments in worker skills as part of it. Um, and, so, and so that's really the, the new focus that I think we can have on the fact um, and that Congress needs to be reminded of in some of our advocacy that we need to see these additional investments that were passed as part of the House's package in workforce um, in order to address both the issues that we've seen for workers need for skills and businesses need for skilled workers throughout the pandemic, as well as now in order to actually 
enable people to access the jobs created by the infrastructure package. The other thing when you mention additional funding is the the House passed version of the Build Back Better Act did not include the free community college provisions that we've talked about as critical for expanding both students access to jobs and training for jobs for which businesses are hiring and community college capacity to deliver some of these training programs and to, to align with the, the workforce investments. Um, and there's the possibility as the conversations open up that, that the conversations uh, that Congress and the administration are having, um, they, they return to some of the, uh, the ability to try to invest in the $40 billion for workforce um, and then potentially some for, for community colleges um, and, and that free community college as well. But I think the, the, um, that might be a little too enthusiastic because the, the, real, the real thing that we're facing here is it's gonna be a difficult and uphill um, advocacy uh, next couple of months in order to protect the investments that Congress has proposed to make in workforce and community and technical colleges, that $40 billion. Um, and so I think that uh, a lot of what we're seeing play out from the announcement yesterday um, and the, the early negotiations that are, that are happening is that um, uh, the, the Dems are still trying to figure out how large of a package they can pass, at least in this first chunk of what they'll be doing and what, and what they need to include in that. And that just makes advocacy from our network even more important. Great. So Katie, of course, um, you know, you mentioned the previous spending bills, the infrastructure bill, as well as, you know, there's there have been some recovery bills prior to that in 2020 and early 2021. So um, thinking about those spending bills that have happened, there were investments in workforce development. So what's happening as far as the administration's efforts um, around implementing those investments? And does this announcement change anything with that implementation? But that's such a good point. So the agencies are obviously um, working on making the case with the administration and Congress for why Build Back Better and supplemental investments matter, but they're also focused on the investments that they've already seen. Um, so the Department of Education, just um, Secretary Cardona and the Vice President uh, today are set to announce um, the availability of $189 million of funding to support success for students at community colleges. Um, and that, that was passed by Congress as part of the, the recovery package. Um, we've also seen coordination between the Department of Commerce and Department of Labor and Education with the Department of Commerce's Good Job Challenge that they've released, um, as well as some work around ensuring that across the investments that these agencies are making in workers and businesses, that there are investments in jobs that lead to good jobs and, and have a standard around job quality. Um, and, and then even outside of some of those pieces, there's a rulemaking process happening just right now with the Department of Education um, on program integrity and accountability tied to access to federal financial aid. And I think to tie that back then to things that are on our network's mind as far as even outside of Build Back Better policy change that needs to happen, um, that rulemaking process and any conversations around access to federal financial aid will also inform both the congressional and any potential implementation conversations that happen around short-term Pell and the JOBS Act. So it's, you really see that kind of circle of influence happening both in the kind of normal order and implementation work that's happening with the agencies right now, informing and, and in some ways setting the stage for potential additional investments and changes that we could see from Congress later this year. And of course, Katie, we're probably going to hear more about all those efforts uh, when we host uh, the three secretaries of education, labor, and commerce at our skills summit next month. So hopefully folks will tune in for that. But while we're speaking of the summit, let's just talk more generally about given where we are, um, what's important for advocates in our network to be doing over the coming weeks and to be thinking about in terms of influencing what's happening, both in terms of implementation of existing resources, but also advocating for these additional. Well, it's probably too short of an answer just to say that they should register and come to the Skills Summit, but, but that's the first step. Um, so uh, we'll be doing a series of virtual advocacy tied both to the summit that's happening um, in the middle of February and then later opportunities throughout the year. But this first set of advocacy opportunities um, 
tied to the, the skills summit, will be hosting a boot camp that will help provide people with the talking points and the opportunities to prepare for a set of virtual meetings with their members of Congress throughout the second half of February. And the timing for that advocacy will be really important to protecting these investments that we talked about as part of any reconciliation package and for setting the stage for the inclusion of short-term Pell and the Jobs Act and some of those other priorities as part of any future vehicles so that we are investing in the capacity of programs to train workers that meet industry demand and ensuring that, that programs um, have access to, to tuition assistance so that students can afford to attend them. Um, at the, the training sessions that we'll host at the summit, we'll cover logistics and talking points for the meetings. Um, and uh, National Skills Coalition staff will help support some of our advocates in being able to set up those meetings so that over the course of those two weeks, we can really make sure that members of Congress um, hear from our network about the importance of these investments. Um, we've got really fantastic um, registration right now and have uh, uh, a significant number of the states have delegations, but we still need coverage from some of those really key states from advocates who are going to be important to making sure that their members hear from the folks within National Skills Coalition's network across the, the spectrum of organizations, how important these investments are to students and to workers and to states and local communities. Great, Katie. So um, obviously the message here is we still need everybody uh, advocating for investments in people, investments in skills. So if you are able, please go to National Skills Coalition's website, www.nationalskillscoalition.org. Right at the top, there's an opportunity to register for the Skills Summit. It's free. You can sign up to hear these great panels, including the panel with the secretaries. Um, but also you can sign up to be a part of both the Hill Boot Camp and the advocacy that's going to take place after that. All right, Katie, well, thanks for everything and we'll see everybody soon.